members whose petition we submitted this morning. It really is amazing that the Court of Claims can say that there's no statutory basis for a presumption of validity of the signature, and yet the rule begins with the presumption of validity of the signature. But it goes even beyond that. It actually provides a roadmap. It says exactly how one can submit a signature that must be presumed valid. Because even if a signature is said to have multiple and obvious deficiencies, it provides exactly how any one curing factor can require that any signature, no matter how many multiple obvious and severe deficiencies, must be presumed as valid. It literally provides the foolproof formula for forgery. And what makes this so significant is that the signature match is the only thing we have to ensure that the person who's submitted the ballot is actually the person to whom it was issued. The Bipartisan Commission on Federal Election Reform, chaired by President Jimmy Carter and former Secretary of State James Baker, identified absentee ballots as the most significant source of ballot insecurity, which is obvious because the ballots are out of the field, unlike ballots that are collected at the polls on election day. The signature match is what the Secretary of State has herself relied on in arguing against voter ID, claiming that the signature verification is all that's necessary. And yet, here she comes before us, saying that here is exactly how she had a signature verification standard, so lenient, so lax, that actually provides exactly how anybody attempting to intercept a ballot and provide a fraudulent signature can do so and be certain that it would be assumed valid by the poll workers. There is little question this was done in bad faith, this was done intentionally to facilitate election fraud, and there is no statutory basis. We will intend to appeal this rule if it goes before JR. Thank you for your time.